our Father. Yeah. Oh, let's stop right there. Yeah. See, you and I, when we look at the work that Jesus did in the name of his Father, you say, oh, man, that's too far away from me. It's impossible. I mean, it's great. It's magnificent. But then he said, yeah, but when you pray, don't say my father, say our father. That means that the same power that is in Jesus is lying dormant in you and me. Oh, I'm, go I'm going there now. I just want you to listen. And you can bring your professors. Is <laughs> This is the kind of theological preaching that is needed to turn out people who become masters yeah. of the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Our father. That means whatever he did for Jesus, he wants to do the same for me. How can I access the same power that he gave my Lord? How can I get to that in my life? Oh, follow me now. Jesus talking with Philip and Philip says master when will I see the father and Jesus said well have I been among you this long and you have not seen him when you see me you see the father I just no, just feed on those words just for a second. When you see me, yeah. you see the Father. Amen. The Father is in me, and I'm in the Father. Whoa! Yeah. Me and my Father are. Yeah. Can you say that? Well, well. I'm talking to you. As a Christian, when I look at you, I should see Jesus. When you look at me, you should see Jesus. When I hear you speak, I should hear the word coming out of you as pure as it came out of the Father. Yes, yes, yes. See, now you can accomplish that. Oh, come on, Farrakhan, now stop. Oh, come on now. Then I'm going to come on. <laughs> How could they say, greater is he yeah. uh -huh. that is in me yeah. than he that is where? Yeah. See, now my brother talking about a leader, I'm Buked and scorned and hated and reviled and spoken evil of. But look at me. Do I look like I'm worried? Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. But you walk with all these bodyguards. That's intelligence. They can't protect me if the enemy wants to kill me. But the Lord is my light and the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? See, I know the God that I teach about. I'm not just talking. I live this every day. Yeah. 
you have never known me to back down from them. It's not in me. I'm not boasting in me. I'm nothing. But as long as he is with me and in me, then the world can't touch me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Let's go back now to the world. Our Father, where is he? Which art in heaven. That's a whole subject that we could spend hours on. Because in Moses' time, Haman, the architect, wanted to build something to get up into the sky where the God of Moses was. That's another whole subject. God is real, brothers and sisters. He's not fake. And you just can't come and feel like you've sung your song and, and nobody could sing it like my sister sang it. Hey. In your song alone, you and the choir, you prove you're the people of God. White folk don't sing like that. I'm not a racist. You just ain't got it. These songs come out of the very nature and being of us. That's why when we hear you singing, the slave would say, everybody talking about him ain't going there. Him, him. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. What you mean? Them people talk about heaven, but they ain't going. When God come and justice comes, they go into hell because every man has to pay for what you do. That's why Jesus said, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, the same shall he. All right. Now let me, let me finish this up so we can get on to the next place. You have access to Christ. Listen, please. He's not so far away that you can't reach him. And you're not so far away in sin that he can't reach you. Well, well. He's after you. He wants you. Yeah. You are the material that he has chosen at, to be the cornerstone of a new world. Yeah. Yeah. See? Remember that? Remember that uh, song? My God, he calls me. He calls me by the thunder. I hear him call within my soul. I ain't got long to stay here. You ain't got long to be in the house of prostitution. You ain't got long to be in the crack house on the corner talking yeah. foolishness. God is after you. That's why the weather has changed. God is whipping the hell out of America and he's whipping you too. He's after you. And the book said he's coming after the despised and the rejected. And they will be his people. And he will be their God. So I close with these words. God is. Oh. The verb to be in the present tense. God is. What does Emmanuel mean? 
Say that again. God with us. God with us. Yes. See, you just can't say it. Right. You got to believe it yes. and challenge yourself to do the work that proves it. God is. Oh, man. He comes to offer you himself. Just a minute. You were God in the beginning. You didn't hear me. There's no mystery God that makes things happen. When you will to do it and come together in his name, there's nothing that you perceive that you can't bring into reality if you believe. Come on now. He's come for you and me. And he offered us himself. Now wait. Paul said, we are joint heirs yes, right. with who? Christ. All right now. Yeah. I'm getting ready to go home. Joint heirs. What is an heir? Right. Well, some of us don't have nothing to leave behind. <laughs> and poor us. Poor Prince. All these millions and no will. And you always watch the dead, you know, when they die. You know. See anything dead on the road? You see a certain bird flies around. They call them vultures. <laughs> They're harmless creatures. They just want to eat what's left of what was once alive. Listen now, we're closing the shop. I had such a wonderful time with you, Reverend. I had such a wonderful feeling in this house. It's a beautiful house. And they built it in 2002 and paid it off in 10 years. That's because he's a good pastor and you help your pastor because he's worthy to be helped. Yeah. Pastor asked me, he said, can, can I take up a, a love offering for you? I said, oh no, Pastor, I don't, I don't want anything. I don't know too many preachers that would come and preach and not ask for something. <laughs> And you see a big frown come over their face if you don't. Where's the envelope? Uh -huh. <laughs> After all that preaching I did, this is all they come up with. Yes, sir. I said, Reverend, if you take up a love offering, I give it back to the church. Yes, the greatest gift that he gave me today are the members of Emmanuel Baptist Church to allow me to talk to you from my heart to your hearts. There's no gift better than that. I don't preach for money. I spent $20,000 with my staff and people that came to spend the weekend with Mr. Dudley. I don't ask for nothing. I was blessed to meet Mr. Dudley. That's worth the money that we spent getting here. And then the ears of entrepreneurs 
That's my blessing. Now, I don't ask, you know, I, I don't, I pay my way to the colleges. They can get me for free. They love it now. And the money that they don't have to give me, they give it to the highest paid rapper. But, but I don't think you'll find a greater MC than... <laughs> okay, Look, now let's, let's wind this up. Christ came to offer himself to us. The scripture says he knocks on the door. And if you open up, he will come in and sup with you. Now, he's not going to come in and eat no pork chops. Oh, no, <laughs> no hog brains and chitlin. He'll stay outside the door. <laughs> that don't mean he won't knock. But you got to come outside. Because <laughs> the smell of them chitlins is, will drive the Lord away. Okay, a little laughter, just a little laughter. But look at this. See, he knocks here and here. In the beginning was the Word, and, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by that Word. See, when he knocks on the door, See, the door to your mind is your ear. So him that hath ears, let him hear. Yeah. 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 Because once he comes in through the word, he'll stay with you. And when the word comes in, God has entered you. Now look at these words from Paul. Paul says, let this mind be in you the same that was in who? Oh, talk to me, church. What kind of mind was in Christ? It was God's mind. Who did they say I am, Peter? Or who do, he's talking about the people. Well, they say you're that prophet that must have come. You're this one, you're that one. But then he looked at the disciples and said, who do you say I am? And then Peter answered saying, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus hushed him because it wasn't time yet for such knowledge to be made known among the people but he was with them all the time now Paul said now Paul was a strange kind of fella because he wasn't one of the original disciples but most of the New Testament is the writings of Paul and say, well, how did he get that kind of knowledge when the other disciples walked with Jesus, but Paul didn't? Well, come on. Well, but he met him on the road to Damascus. Yeah. And you've got a road that you're traveling. Yeah. Who will you meet on your road? <laughs> the prostitute, the dope seller? The low life, or will God speak to you 
after you've been persecuting Christians. Paul heard him. And Paul became renewed. And Paul spoke things that the other disciples that walked with Jesus had not heard. Say, well, where did he get it? See, the father had already, he had gone up to be with the father. So he was, commu he, the father was communicating to the people through Paul. And that's why they thought he was preaching something strange and new. But he had in-depth knowledge of the book because he was being taught directly from the father. Let this mind be in you. The same that was in Christ Jesus. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye what? By what? Has your mind been renewed? You're on the road, but a Negro is what a Negro does. <laughs> And if you're still doing the same old mess that the white man made out of you, the mind of Christ not in you yet. But you're in the right place. But when that mind comes in you, when you let it come in, it starts rearranging your life. Let him in. And once he is in you, Leader, you ready to lead. You don't really need a leader when he comes in. All you got to say is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't look for a leader. I just tune up. There he is right there. He gave me the number how to call him. You got the number and lost it. How could you lose the number of these famous singers and you know you love them, but he gave me his number. What you going to do with it? I'm going to call it what you think. Well, if you know how to reach the Father, why don't you call him up? Invite him in. If you're tired of living the kind of crazy life you live, give him a chance to make you over and make you into him so that you, like uh, Jesus could say, have you not seen him? If you're a Christian, a real Christian, I'm not talking about this kind of Christian that white folks make. I'm talking about the real Christian that Christ makes. When you become that kind of Christian, that kind of Christian and a Muslim, a good Muslim, they're the same. Because a Muslim submits his will to do the will of God. And that's what Jesus did. He didn't say, look at what I do. I raised the dead. I, I, all that I talk, hush your mouth. The master said, I can of myself do, do, do. Well, how are you going to do something and you don't invite people to help you do the Lord's work? Walking around arrogant, you know. Who, who am I? Well, you know, Christ made himself of no reputation. So don't talk about who you are. You the deacon, you know. I'm the this, I'm the that. No. I'm a servant. Yes. In the house of the Lord. I love serving God's people. 
So, beloved, I offer you in truth myself and my life for you to study. Yes. I gave up this world to be his. My God. I was a musician. Yes. Not a bad one. I would have made a lot of money. But he asked me, would you give all of that up for me? And I didn't even have to think hard. I said, yes, sir. He said, your greatest gift is not your violin playing, not your singing, not your dad dancing, not your acting. Your greatest gift is in the spiritual. Would you give up all of that for me and concentrate on the spiritual? I said, yes, sir. If any man would be my disciple, he must first do what? Who? What are you willing to give up to receive him? What are you willing to give up that keeps you from him? I gave up my music. That's the only thing I knew. It's the only thing that made me happy. But I gave it up. And now I'm happy all the time. <laughs> you know, no, no, serious. I had a reefer in my hat band when I heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad speak. The brothers searched me, but they didn't get into the hat band. So I got in with my little, you know. And after he finished talking to me, Lord, I had to make a decision. My reefer was gone, my pork was gone, my bad life was gone, and you were all on my mind, seeing black people free, getting a word to you that would lift you out of the clutches of the son of perdition. I gave it up. And when I gave it up, I picked up a cross. I don't wear it around my neck. I don't go in the jewelry store to buy a cross. When you live the life of Christ, you're on the cross. Can you take it? Can you handle it? Here I am. I'm handling it. Not by myself. The Lord is my strength. That's why I wept when my sister sang God here. Because he really is. And every one of you that heard that song and sang that song and got deep into the spirit of that song. You're the people of God. And you got to let him in. And he'll make a new person. Behold, I make all things what? Take off the old man and? And the new man is? See, oh, here we go. So I thank you, my dear beloved pastor, my friend, my brother, my teacher. I thank God for you. I thank God for the work that you've done in this wonderful City of Winston. I thank God for my brother Mikhail Muhammad. Where's Mikhail? There he is. And the Muslim brothers. I thank God for our mentor Hummings and the encouragement that she meant to me musically. And now, God, I, after I gave up my music, He gave it back to me. See, when, you, when you're ready to give up something for him, Amen. he tests you. Amen. You remember the test with Abraham? Take him up on the mountain and sacrifice him. Yes. 
How many of you could <laughs> obey such an instruction? That instruction sounds crazy as all get out. But God can't try you with something that's easy. He tries you with something that you love and something that is difficult to give up. So he said, Abraham, you've been waiting all this time for a son. Okay, you got him now. Now I want you to take him up on the mountain and sacrifice him there for me. Now I don't know what, how Abraham got out of that. Or God, yes, I do know how, but you don't hear Abraham saying, God, why you do that to me? <laughs> but there's sayings that Satan came to the son and said, boy, he ain't sacrificing no ram up there or no lamb up there. It's you. And the son said, whatever God wants. It's all right with me. Yeah. So the son and the father, God bless both of them by obeying a command that made them think God had gone crazy. And just as he was about to plunge that dagger, God stayed his hand. Yeah. And the Quran says it like this. He said he tried Abraham with certain commands. And when he had fulfilled them, he said, surely I will make you a leader of men. So my young brother, you're going to be a great leader one of these days, but God is going to try your heart. And he's going to try you by the things that you love. But if you can obey his commands, no matter how difficult it is, he'll do for you what he did to Abraham. You'll not be a great leader until you've been tried. But after you get tried, that's what your cross is. Then you're ready. To be a leader of God's people. Thank you for listening and may God bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Church, say amen. amen. We have been richly blessed this morning in a way that however you walked in, you're not going to leave the same. Amen. We're going to open the doors of the church. Minister made many strong appeals this morning. And perhaps somebody's ready to live a different lifestyle to live and walk in truth, to live and walk in dignity, to live and walk like you are the somebody that God wants you to be. And if you're not there yet, don't give up because you are a work in progress. So if you have been challenged, move this morning, the doors of the church are open for you.
Everybody. On Christ. seated and just remain for a couple of minutes more. I'm going to ask our ushers to be at the door and I do want to take up an offering for the minister. He blessed us with a rich word this morning. He stepped on a lot of toes, but I'm used to him, him doing that anyway. But the truth, sometimes it hurts, but in the truth there is healing and there is renewal. Amen. I asked the media not to come. If they want to talk, we can talk afterwards. But I just wanted to have a great worship service. Amen. I didn't want them coming in, going out, and misquoting what the minister said or what they think it means. I don't want to be bothered with all the politics. Let's just have a good worship. And what a worship it was. Amen. Muslims and Christians worshiping together. What a blessing. We have all been empowered in a rich way. And as I said, however,